Hello, I am Clement Spottler from Interactive Instruments and I will explain the work in OWS8 related to the encoding of features following the topographic dataset specification of NGA using KML and styling the features according to portrayal rules published in a portrayal registry. In the precursor initiative, OWS7, the use of KML as a format for exchange and visualization of topographic dataset data from NGA has originally been explored using the following approach. An XSLD transformation style suite for the conversion of data from the GML representation of the topographic dataset data to a KML representation has been automatically derived from the application schema in UML. In the KML representation, all feature properties have been encoded in the KML extended data section. The KML data has been accessed from the OGC web feature service providing the GML representation using the web feature service capability to provide alternative output formats and by implying the automatically generated transformation. In OWS 7, the styling of the KML place marks was fixed per feature type. In OWS, the following improvements were investigated. The encoding rule that generates the XSLT transformation style suite has been enhanced to support different styles per feature type depending on the properties of the individual feature. In this process, the same portrayal rules were used as those using the feature portrayal services deployed in OWS 8. The portrayal rules as well as the KML styles were accessed on demand from the portrayal registry and the feasibility of this approach was investigated. Let's have a look how this works in the KML client. We are using Google Earth here. The first step is to add the URL of the KML cache as a network link. After navigating to the Watsonville airport, also used in other demonstrations, we see the topographic dataset data using the same symbology. We can also see, for example, that the different buildings are shown in the correct symbology depending on their height or their function as an educational building, etc. If we click on a feature, the usual balloon appears with additional information encoded in the KML extended data section of the placemark and styled as a table. Now let's have a look at what's happening behind the scenes. First, our shape change tool creates the resources to publish the topographic dataset features in KML. It reads the application schema, which is provided as a URL model, as well as the associated portrayal rules from the portrayal registry, which is provided by Carmenta. The portrayal rules are represented using OGC symbology encoding. The XSLT transformation study for the transformation from GML to KML is published to the web feature service that provides the NGA dataset. In addition, a KML network link with regions with HTTP hyperlinks to the KML cache is created and published on a web server. This network link is then accessed by the KML client Google Earth and is shown in the Places section. Once regions become visible as the user changes its view, Google Earth follows the links and accesses the KML cache. If the region has not been accessed recently, the region is not in the cache and the data is accessed from the WFS, stored in the cache and returned to Google Earth. The KML place marks are displayed, and for this, the KML styles, which are referenced from the portrayal rules, are accessed and used. Through the experiments, we found that this approach worked well as long as portrayal rules were simple. However, conceptual differences between portrayal in OGC symbology and coding and KM are an issue for more complex rule sets and symbolizations. The main issues are symbology and coding uses the painter's model and supports multiple rules per feature. KML place mark only one rule. Second, KML styles cannot be used to appropriately render complex symbology encoding symbolizer text. And third, KML supports interaction with the map, symbology encoding does not. We also found that the portrayal rule set used in OWS8 did not provide scale information, even though most of the data is only meant for use at large scale, and using the data at other scales may lead to undesired results in behavior of the client. The use of scale information is strongly recommended and helps to reduce the data load for both the server and client. With respect to the caching of KML regions, the chosen approach worked well. However, if a significant amount of KML data is loaded in Google Earth, the interaction becomes less smooth. The use of scale information and portrayal rules can help here as mentioned before. Thank you very much for your attention.